welcome to my studio. I'm Bonnie Lahoda. I developed the DAS transfer systems, the sauces, and the film that is used uh, for creating image transfers made from your digital photographs. Today I'm going to be showing you the very simple, basic image transfer process that I developed using Purell hand sanitizer. There are other sanitizers on the market. Uh, I prefer this one because it doesn't have a lot of perfume in it and it also has a 70% ethyl alcohol in it. Some of the other sanitizers do not have that much alcohol. So I recommend using this one. Uh, it's available on Amazon in uh, half gallon bottles if you're doing classroom work. You'll need to gather up a few items to do this. One is um, an image printed on the DOS film and I'm using the classic film. When you print on the film, touch both sides with a damp finger, print on the sticky side. Sometimes people make a mistake and they'll print on the other side and then the ink runs all over. So be sure that you print on the side that feels sticky to a damp finger. The paper that we transfer to is uh, Arches 88. It is a printmaking or silkscreen paper. It is water leaf, which means there's no sizing in it. If you left this in water, it would begin to fall apart. Um, the papers that are like uh, Arches watercolor papers, I have a lot of sizing and so this process does not work well for those. So this print has been uh, dried overnight and if you're in a hurry you can dry your prints with a hairdryer. I've cut my paper to be a little bit bigger all the way around and then what I did uh, was I, <coughs> this is another one, I've put blue tape slightly inside the margins because I want to have this really nice even but irregular edge that looks a little bit like uh, a Holga edge or a Instagram edge on the photograph. Now you'll notice with this, this film was very short here. I need to be able to place this so that it's tacked down to the substrate and if I do that this picture is not centered on the paper anymore. If that happens just cut an extra piece of film and tack it on as a leader. So now I can place this down and get my image on the center of the paper and have room to tack this down to the substrate that I'm working on. You'll need to use a very smooth hard surface to put the paper on. A piece of glass will do just fine. And I use uh, this blue painter's tape to tape everything down. Now one little trick that I do is I put these pieces of tape right where my paper should line up. Then I place the film down where I want it to be centered on the paper. And then I'm going to trans <coughs> tape this down to the board. Okay, now when I bend this back, it's always going to be in place and as I'm wetting this surface with the Purell, I can turn it over and I'll always get this paper back down where it belongs. So let's get started. Just put down a generous amount of the sanitizer. Use a speedball soft brayer and you want to work it into the paper all the way to the edges. This paper will soak up quite a bit of sanitizer. And then turn your paper over. I'm going to soak the back side. This is a process that is really good to introduce um, elementary school kids to the process. Uh, this is uh, really what you're doing is you're taking your digital photographs and you're making a unique piece of artwork with it because every transfer will be a little bit different. They'll have some imperfections like old photographs do and it just really gives an interesting character. Now you can see I'm lining this up where I have that tape again and then this will be the last layer of the Purell that I'll put down. 
I can look at this at an angle and I can see whether the uh, paper is getting evenly wet and whether it's evenly absorbing. Now as you do this you'll notice ridges in the Purell. You want to make sure that you work all of those out. This is beginning to look really good. I think I'll give it just a little bit more. There were a few supplies you need to gather up to do these and those are listed on the uh, first screen that I've shown you here. Don't want to go through listing materials. Just, just right down to showing you how this process works. All right, that's nice and wet. Now I have a soft paint roller that's going to help me uh, guide this down. You're not pushing down, you're just going to slide forward. Then I'm going to take my brayer, wipe it off on a little piece, another piece of paper, and just gently, don't press in too hard, just gently roll across. Then I have a one minute timer here that is going to keep track of my one minute that this will be down. And where I have taped this on the other side now, I'm going to have a really pretty edge on this. That's not necessary to do, but I really like to have a nice finished look to my transfers. You might want to just take your finger and ever so lightly make sure that that's pressed down. This just takes about a minute. What happens is the Purell and the alcohol in it goes up and dissolves the inkjet film that's on the uh, clear material and then it's absorbed into the paper. Oh, this minute is going pretty quick, but let's take a peek and see, I'll do it from this side. Nope, not ready yet. I think I'll give this a good pressing. A little bit more firmness to the rolling now. And you can see it's through here that it is making this nice edge. So we'll wait a couple more minutes. Depending on the humidity where you live, uh, this will vary. And it also uh, the time varies based on how long your print dried and also whether you have used an Epson printer that has piezo inks or if you've used a Canon that has a, the thermal inkjet. Uh, the inks absorb differently into the material depending on what printer you're using. So you will need to do a few experiments to see what's going to work best in your studio. Oh, this is looking gorgeous. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect transfer. And now I'm going to leave this on this whiteboard. This is a piece of polypropylene. It's a non-absorbent surface. I like to let it stay on this board to dry so that the paper dries completely flat. Now one of the other things that you can do is work with a black and white photograph. And before you do your transfer, use colored pencils or watercolor crayons to draw directly on the printed image on the film. Any place that you draw, like here there was the orange and the yellow on this part of the building, and then I took a uh, wet paper towel and wiped into the edges a little bit. All of that transfers when you do, uh, do this onto the Arches 88 paper. So any handwork, including Stabilo pencils, are very nice. Um, this is another example where I colored in just the legs of this bird, purple on the toenails, a few red feathers. Uh, I took a Stabilo graphite pencil and drew in some uh, 
missing feathers that were on this leaf. So this is all handwork that can be done. Again, I wiped off the edges on the film so that I created a completely different kind of edge than what we had uh, on this typewriter piece that we just did. So it, there's a lot of experimenting that can be done. Uh, I don't really recommend this for very, very large pieces. I think 22 by 30 would be a bit much. Uh, you'd probably have to use a whole bottle of sanitizer to make that work. But certainly in a school situation or when you're just learning, you do some 8 by 10s, 5 by 7s, and just get a feel for the, how this transfer process works. Thank you for visiting my studio.